Hey guys, so today we're going to talk about a subscriber question that I got the other day, which is basically, Frederick, can you explain a little bit about npm ci, which is a command for npm? So let's get into it. Now this is a very, very specific question and I usually don't, I, this is almost too specific because, I, I, guys, I'm just gonna say this, I don't want you to take, the, take it the wrong way, but this is one of those cases where Let's just say, had you asked this specific question on the wrong forum, odds are that you are going to get somebody telling you, read the fucking manual. Because this is literally the sort of question where this question falls into that category. You can actually go and just look at the documentation. It will very clearly explain what this specific command does. But I will make an exception for this because this is the sort of question that may be asked due to a not understand you may read the text you may understand what the command does but you may not know why this is valuable so that's what we're going to talk about so to give us ourselves a little bit of context let's talk about the command itself basically what it allows you to do is to run a short version or a very like more a non it's, it's the same thing for the most part as running npm install with a few major differences. And the difference is that this is not optimized for users, like for human users. This command is intended to be used as part of a CI build. Here go the CI, well, the CI name, I suppose. But the reason why you want to have a separate command for this is because when you run this command, you don't want to support installing separate packages. You want to install the entire project using the package lock, the package lock JSON file. In other words, the file that locks down your dependencies. That's what you're after. Now, the reason why you want to do that is because you want to be able to create a consistent and reproducible build. That's the whole idea behind this. And so why would you want to be able to do that? Well, you see guys, on off, I would have to, I'm, I'm sorry I have to have to say this, but one of the dumbest things ever with NPM and like all of this stuff is the range the, the, the range, um, the possibility to express a range on your version. Now, why is this a stupid thing? Isn't it a great idea to have, you know, the possibility of running npm install on your project? And if you have a range, you get magical, like you get updates and improvements and patches and stuff like that for free without having to specify that you want another version. I argue no. I argue that it's the dumbest thing ever because that entails something. And that is that you trust, whenever you specify a range on your version, when you depend on a package, you are trusting that the people who maintain that project will at no point introduce any changes to the code. I mean, remember, the version can be anything. Semver does represent a fairly a somewhat of a standard. It's not a standard, but it's like a good practices type of thing. There is a semantics to it, if you will, but it's not a given thing. So that means that whenever you run npm install with a range version, you will run the possibility of having different code as a part of your system. Now, that is very, very dangerous when you want to be certain that this thing that came out into production last time is the exact damn thing that came, is going to come out this time. Because if you have a range, you cannot be sure. You have no guarantees what, of, what packages are going to be included. And remember, it's not just your packages. It's the packages of the pa your dependencies and their packages and so forth. Like every single thing that's being pulled in, unless that has an explicit version, you run the risk of having a different set of code running in your system. That is very, very bad. For local development, for your own project, that's, it's nothing wrong with that. But when you are interested in having a CI pipeline, you're interested in deploying things out into production, stability is key. And stability comes from reproducible results. If you can reproduce it, then it's stable. If it's not, if it's flaky, or if, it's diff have diff you know, if something has different behaviors from time to time, 
you, it's not a good idea to have that as part of your production release. So that's where this command comes in. So it's very, very powerful and useful to be able to, I mean, even the lock file, that's, if you didn't know that, Yarn, for example, which is another very pack, you know, popular package manager, one of the main reasons why that came into existence to begin with, apart from performance and so forth, was to be able to do this sort of stuff, because you need to be able to say that this exact version of this code is the stuff that I, is, is what I want. And I want only that, nothing else. And then ship that. That's what you need, because you can't have code changing from time to time between every release. This is especially useful when you work at larger projects where you have a CI tool like, say, Travis or GitLab or Jenkins, for example, and you want to have several, you have several people that works on you know their own workstations they push things to their pipeline to the ci pipeline or the ci system and they release things continuously because while you're while you're doing that you're very very sure that when person a pushes and person person b pushes it's going to be the same dependencies every time so it's not you know if something breaks it's not going to be because you have a different package than you had the last time you did something which is very very useful a good example of when, you know, at the lower scale, when you don't have to, you know, because it's, there's another scenario that I just at, at the top of my head can imagine where this is a very useful command for just your own development. And that is when you use something like Docker, for example. Let's say that you have a Docker image and you are declaring your Docker file. And what you want is to install basically your application into the, or include it into the container. Now, the, a, very, a fairly good practice is that instead of just copying whatever it is in your own project directory, you will actually just copy the package JSON file and the package lock file in, into the container. And inside of the container, apart from depending of no, on Node, of course, you will actually run npm install. But if you run npm ci, that's actually a little bit better because once again, that means that every time you push something to the container or create a new container, you can trust that it's going to be the same thing as the last time the lock file was updated. So what I want you to take away from this is that when it comes to continuous integration and releasing code in general, having strict versions is a very, very good thing because you need to be sure that every time you send something out into production, the same code is still valid. You cannot send out different code from time to time because if you do, or odds are that some package maintainer somewhere is going to break your entire application. And that's a very important thing to have in mind when you're, work, when you're working on large projects. Have a great day.